Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the five things you should avoid doing in a technical interview. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. Before we get started, if you guys are interested in coding interview content in general, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel down below because I will have more videos on this topic coming. I'm very excited that we have a sponsor for this video. AlgoExpert.io is a platform where you can access a ton of videos with code and interview questions and explanation on how to solve them, how to optimize them, uh, explanation on runtime and space complexity, and obviously a solution in different coding languages. If you go to AlgoExpert.io slash Luba and use a code Luba at the checkout, you will get 30% off algoexpert.io. My friend Stefan, a senior software engineer, is joining me today to share the five tips on what to avoid in a technical coding interview. Let's get started. Tip number one, never jump right in when you're in a technical coding interview. Why that is the case is because, you know, being an interviewer myself, there were so many times when I would pose the question to the person and they would hear something that they think they know right away and jump into solving that problem that they seemingly think they understand. Where in reality, there would be a component, a thing that I would add on top of that problem that actually completely changes the potential solution to the coding problem that you need to implement. So please make sure that anytime you start a coding interview, you actually make sure that you fully understand what is being asked of you. And that is actually true for not a coding interview also, but for any interview. Understand first what the person wants from you and only then proceed to thinking about how to solve it. Tip number two, guys, be mindful of the time. When you go to these interviews, they'll ask you a question and you might think that this is the only, th only question there is, but actually there's usually at least two. And uh, if you finish those two, an interviewer always has more. And the more questions they ask you, the more opportunity they have to get signal. So whenever you uh, are in the interview, first make sure that the first 10 minutes you don't spend just talking about uh, things that don't give enough signal. And second, as you're executing and r writing the code, really be mindful. It shouldn't usually take more than 20 minutes to complete one question. Tip number three, make sure that you plan before you actually code. What I mean by that is when you think, oh, there is this one edge case that I know I need to handle, let's say like handling duplicates in the coding question, but I will just think about it later. I will just code up up until the point where something works and then implement that edge case later. No, you need to make sure that you know exactly how you're going to handle all the different cases that might come up in the problem before you start implementing it. Because you know, a lot of the time you implement something, think, okay, like I'll just think later about this one case. And then once you're done, you realize that for you to implement this one particular case, you need to change your whole approach, your whole logic of the solution. And that actually will make you waste so much time and doesn't look very good on you to the interviewer because you know they think that, oh, maybe you're just sloppy and you can't really think of how to architect a problem, architect a solution ahead of time. So make sure that maybe you write step by step in pseudocode of what exactly you're going to do before you actually start coding the problem in the language that you pick as a final solution. Tip number four, when you receive a question, you might already know the simple solution and you might be tempted to actually go ahead and just implement that solution to gain confidence, but it's not the most optimal path. What you can do is this. First, just say the solution that you have in mind, but then say, hey, I want to think about the more optimal solution, the, the more difficult problem. Don't be afraid to go that step because that step gives you much more signal. If you solve the problem in the first impression way, it's usually actually not the strongest signal. Tip number five, you should be able to code in one full swoop. And what we mean by that is that 
once you actually you know plan ahead of time back to our tip number three and know exactly where you're coding you should be so confident in what you're actually implementing that your syntax your implementation the the way you use i don't know for loops or name variable is just gonna work if you were to run it i would recommend to look once once you feel like the solution is done I would look over it once again so that, again, you can catch any kind of errors that you potentially might have done while you were coding, and that actually gives a really good syntax to your interviewer again because they think, oh, this person is good at checking their work, they're not just going to be like, -da -da -da, like, done, okay, just take it away from me. They're actually going to come back and maintain it. They're going to, you know, like rewrite certain things or fix certain things if they actually think they need to be fixed. And again. You might think, if I'm coding on a whiteboard, for example, why should that code be a code that is possible to run and it's going to work? And there is definitely going to be a person who will come into the interview and code the solution up in five minutes. And if you were to put that solution in an ID, it will actually run and work. And you want to be that person because you want to be that best interview candidate that just wrote the code up and everything was ideal and perfect because that again gives an amazing signal to your interviewer you don't just want to be someone who's like okay good enough like that kind of works but kind of doesn't but whatever i got the working solution you want to be that star that just coded everything and your interviewers had just fell off because they thought you were so amazing and you were so fast and your code was so clean. Okay guys, thank you for watching. We hope these tips help you ace your interviews, kill it, and get the job that you dreamed of. Thank you so much for watching again. If you liked this video, which we hope you did, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and put the notification button on, you know the drill. Um, again, please check out algoexpert.io for those amazing coding interview videos. And we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye for now.